We are here to help. Many math problems involving solving systems of equations using matrices or finding the inverse of a matrix. Gaussian elimination is one of the methods we can use to solve these types of questions. When performing Gaussian elimination, following a structured procedure will help you get to your end goal sooner. If we don't follow a structured procedure, the process can get messy, become time consuming, and also make for more errors. Let's go over how to use Gaussian elimination efficiently. This will not only save time, but also decrease the chance of errors along the way. Suppose we obtain the following augmented matrix from a system of equations. Our goal is to perform row operations until the matrix on the left hand side contains ones along the diagonal and zeros everywhere else. We're going to achieve this in the following order. First, we will ensure the top left entry is a one in the first row. If it isn't, we can divide the first row or swap with another row that has a one in the first column. Step two, create a lower left triangle of zeros. We will do this one column at a time and use the first row as our pivot to create zeros in the first entries of every row below it. Let's start to manipulate the second row. We want to change that leading three into a zero using the first row as our pivot. If we multiply the first row by three and subtract it from the second row, this will give us the zero we want. Performing the calculation, our new row two will have a zero where we want it. And we can rewrite our matrix. Now we can manipulate the third row. We want to make the leading four into a zero using the first row as our pivot. This time we will multiply row one by four and subtract it from row three. Performing the calculations, we get our new row three and can rewrite our matrix. Now we'll manipulate the fourth row using the first row as our pivot. Our goal is to change the leading negative one into a zero. In order to do that, all we have to do is add row one to row four. Performing the calculations, we get our new row four and rewrite our matrix. Remember that our goal is to reduce the lower left triangle to be all zeros. Now that our first column is how we want it, we can focus on creating our zeros in the second column. To do this, we'll use the second row as our pivot. To start, we'll change the third row to make the negative eight into a zero by subtracting row two from row three. Performing the calculation, we get our new row three and can rewrite our matrix. Now we will change the one in the fourth row to a zero using the second row as our pivot. By adding one eighth times row two to row four, performing the calculation, we get our new row four and can rewrite our matrix. We have one more entry to take care of in our lower triangle in the fourth row. We will use the third row as our pivot to do this. To change the one quarter in row four to a zero, we will subtract one sixteenth row three from row four and perform the calculations. To obtain our new row four, we can rewrite our matrix. Now that the lower left triangle is all zeros, we can focus on making the upper triangle into zeros. We will change the negative two and two into zeros first using the third row as our pivot. But before we do that, we should make the four in row three into a one by multiplying row three by one quarter. Now we can use row three as our pivot to change row one and row two. We will change row two first by subtracting two times row three from it. Performing the calculation, we get our new row two. Now we can change row one by adding two row three to it. Performing the calculations, we get our new row one, and we almost have an upper triangle of zeros. We will use the second row as our pivot to create the remaining zeros in the upper right triangle. Before we use it to change row one, we can multiply row two by negative one over eight to make the calculation simpler. To change the two in row one to a zero, we need to subtract two times row two from row one. And after performing the calculation, we have our new matrix, which now has an upper triangle of zeros and a main diagonal of ones. We've now completed our Gaussian elimination and our matrix is in reduced row echelon form. Now we can use it to determine the solution to the system.